Peace, brothers and sisters. This is Hua Qi. Thank God, it is time again for our Bible reading. Let's continue to read Genesis, chapter forty-eight. Today we will start from verse five. Jacob was near his end; he was ill in bed. Joseph took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, alone to visit him. Jacob took his chains, and blessed Joseph. He gave Joseph double portion as the firstborn. Verse five, and now your two sons, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh should be mine, as Reuben and Simon are. Jacob adopted Joseph's two sons. They were his, just like his own two sons, Reuben and Simon, were his. Jacob did this because he wanted Joseph's two sons to inherit God's properties. In Jacob's heart, this last seventeen years of life was comfortable and enjoyable. However, no matter how abundant and beautiful Egypt was, to him this was the land of sojourning. Only Canaan was the promised land forever for him and his descendants. Though Joseph was the second in command in Egypt, and had high status and glory, these were from people and were only temporary. Though Jacob was old and ill, and he must lay in bed, his spirit was alert. He was willing to bless Joseph before he died, and gave Joseph double portion as the firstborn. Verse six, and the children that. You fathered after them shall be yours. They shall be called by the name of their brothers in the inheritance. These two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, belonged to Jacob. In other words, there were thirteen sons under Jacob's name. If Joseph had more children after these two sons, they also had a share in Canaan. However, they belonged to the brothers Ephraim and Manasseh. They would receive the share under their names. Now we wanted to ask a question: Why did Jacob have to bless Joseph so he could receive the firstborn blessing before all of, of his brothers? Because Joseph was the eleventh child among Jacob's sons, there was no way he would be the one who inherit the firstborn blessing. Jacob was not confused. He was very aware in his spirit that this was God's will. Based on man's perspective, we would say Joseph was the best among the twelve sons. He was upright, pure, and kind. He became the savior for the entire family. Thus, he could receive the double portion as the firstborn blessing. This might be right. However, what followed in the Bible marvelled us as well as surprised us. Why? Because Jacob said in verse seven, "As for me, when I came from Padan to my sorrow, Rachel died in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was still some distance to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem." Before he blessed Joseph, he mentioned Rachel, especially her death and burial. She was buried in Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. We might be able to infer this. In Jacob's heart, Rachel was his beloved. Ra- Rachel was his wife. Rachel's firstborn son Joseph was his firstborn. If Jacob did not think this way, he would not mention Rachel at this time. We know that Jacob was one hundred forty-seven at this time. His beloved wife Rachel had been dead for forty years. However, he never forgot her. In my opinion, Jacob and Rachel's story is the greatest love story in the Bible. In chapter twenty-nine, Jacob met Rachel for the first time. He was very down and out. He fled from Canaan to Padan Aram to live with his uncle. After being through many sufferings, he finally arrived at Padan Aram. He was really aggrieved and helpless. His first encounter with Rachel was in chapter twenty-nine, verse eleven. Verse eleven. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. 
when Jacob was at his greatest needs, Rachel accepted him and gave him comfort. The record in the Bible showed that Rachel was very beautiful, generous, and a little cap capricious and arrogant in her character. However, when Jacob saw her for the first time, he loved her. Jacob's love for Rachel never changed throughout his life. Now he was a one hundred forty-seven years old man, and knew that he soon would、uh, sleep sleep with his forefathers. Looking at Rachel's firstborn son Joseph, he acknowledged that Joseph was his firstborn. Thus, he was willing to give Joseph the firstborn blessings. The understanding of the Bible is often not a matter of right or wrong, but a problem of low and high experiences. We know that in God's will, Leah was Jacob's wife. Thus, Jacob's love for Rachel was considered or seen as negative. By most of the Bible scholars, they thought Jacob could not overcome his natural desires, even at his deathbed. I see this differently. I share this with you as a reference. You can bring this before God and think it, it over. Then decide which one you prefer. In fact, a lot of times the interpretation of the Bible is not the matter of right or wrong, but of the depth of life. By the judgment of simple morality, we might feel that since Leah was the wife chosen by God for Jacob, he should obey. Had he submitted, he would not have the trouble of so many wives and kids. However, my view was totally opposite. Jacob loved Rachel, and he loved her for life. This was positive side. God respected his choice. Of course, God knew that Jacob's uncle Laban was a deceitful man. He would make Leah to be Jacob's first wife by trickery. Since God respected Jacob's pure love for Rachel, He allowed both Leah and Rachel to be Jacob's wives. Of course, compared to Rachel, Leah was more gentle in character, thus was more blessed by God. Rachel had a self-willed and arrogant character. She was competing with Leah in giving birth, so that the two servant girls also became Jacob's wives. God foreknew all these. He also permitted, by God's sovereignty, he wanted Jacob to have twelve sons, and through whom came the twelve tribes of Israel. All these happened because of the fact that Jacob loved Rachel. This faithful love was respected by God. Love is the basis for marriage. The faithful love and unchanging love for a lifetime was valued by God. Jacob made many mistakes in life. So did Rachel. However, this did not change the pure love for each other. Today, it is rare to have this kind of faithful love between husband and wife. Many people married for love, yet could not keep it faithfully. They could not overcome troubles, nor forgive the others' mistakes. Last, they divorce easily. This was not agreed by God. The love between between Jacob and Rachel was persistent and long-lasting, even when Jacob was one hundred forty-seven years old and dying, and his wife Rachel had been dead for over forty years. He still misses her. He wanted to bless Rachel's son Joseph and、uh, gave him the right as firstborn, the double portion. Jacob at this time was very experienced and very mature in life. He knew that this was the will of God. Sure enough, a few hundred years later, Joshua led Israelites cross Jordan River and returned to Canaan. When they were dividing the land in Joshua. Chapter fourteen, verse four. For the people of Josh, Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and no portion was given to the Levites in the land. Here foretold what would happen a few hundred years later. Joseph's two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, became two tribes of Israel and inherited the land. Levi was set apart to serve the Lord, thus had no land. This indicated that Jacob's blessings became God's will. A few hundred years later, this became real. 
In his memorial to Rachel, Jacob emphasized that Rachel was buried where there was still some distance to go to Ephrath. Jacob knew he would be taken back to Canaan after his death and be buried in the cave of Machpelah with Leah. However, he would not stop mentioning Rachel, who was buried on the way to Ephrath. God even remembered this about two thousand years later, when God's Son Jesus Christ came to the world. He was born in Bethlehem, that is Ephrath. When the king Herod knew this, he killed all the boys under the age of two in all the cities of Bethlehem. In Matthew chapter two, verse eighteen, says this: A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. On the way to Bethlehem, Rachel died of childbirth. When giving birth to her second son Benjamin, she had a dysdosia. She saw the son in her arms and felt sorry for this child. She named him Ben Oni, son of my trouble. Jacob changed his name into Benjamin, son of my right hand, or son of resurrection. This foreshadowed that one day in the future, God's Son Jesus Christ would be born as the son of trouble. After death and resurrection, he would become the son of right hand. He would be born in Bethlehem. Rachel's descendants became the first generation of martyrs who welcomed God's Son Jesus Christ's birth. All martyrs are overcomers. This indicated that God's blessings to Rachel were great. The faithful, persistent, unchanging love between Jacob and Rachel was valued by God. Dear brothers and sisters, let's see God's sovereign leading through this incident. Calvin theology emphasizes predestination and the power and authority of God. Thus, some saints who could not balance these. Would think that man's free will worth nothing before God, under His authority. Thus, they emphasized so much on God's authority to the point that people might think God is a tyrant. Thus, no one can against His autocratic leadership. I personally think this is not a well balanced view. Leah was God's will for Jacob. However, Jacob loved Rachel. God also respected this. God's leading for Jacob was not autocratic; that forced him to submit to his will, and let go of his love for Rachel. On the contrary, before God predestined this, He foreknew Jacob and Rachel. By His foreknowledge, God knew the choices Jacob and Rachel would make. He then predestined their way of life. In Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-nine to thirty, wrote. Twenty-nine. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. God foreknew first, then predestined it. Verse thirty. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Thus, before the predestination, there was God's foreknowledge. This foreknowledge had a man's free will and choice. For the pure love between Jacob and Rachel, God valued. Thus, God predestined the romantic life for Jacob. He added to him the other three wives, whom were not what Jacob wanted. From them came twelve tribes, twelve sons, and then became twelve tribes of Israel. From these twelve, the nation of Israel came, then the country of of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, God's son Jesus Christ was born. Thus, under God's sovereignty and His authority, we needed to acknowledge that. Oftentimes, we do not know. Romans chapter eleven, verse thirty-two to thirty-six. Paul said, "For God has consigned all to disobedience, that He may have mercy on all." Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments, and how inscrutable the His ways! 
for whom has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory for ever. Amen. Without understanding, Paul came to places which are also something we had to acknowledge when facing the mysteries of God's will. Jacob loved Rachel for his entire life, which became a beautiful example for us. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you for your abundant wisdom and, and knowledge. How unsearchable are your judgment and how inscrutable your ways. Under your leadership, by your sovereignty, we thank you for value our free will. Help me so every choice I make will not stray away from your grace. Thank you for every person and thing you have put in my life. Help me to humble before you and know your good will. Give me a submitting heart and a thankful spirit, knowing that all your leadings are good. Bless my life in Jesus' name. Amen.